morning, everyone. Welcome to The Water's Edge. Whether you're joining us online, through Facebook or YouTube, or if you're right here with us in person, we're delighted to have you. If you're joining virtually, remember to hit that like button, share our content, and drop a comment down below to let us know that you're here. For those in the room, we've got some important updates just for you. If you have any little ones, our nursery and kids church are set up just across the lobby, providing a safe and environment just for them. The heart of our community is our volunteers, and we're always looking for more passionate individuals to join us. To get involved, simply scan the barcode on the screen or text the word volunteer to 884-793-7384. Let's not forget that we're a welcoming space for everyone, especially those facing challenges. If you know someone in need, extend an invitation to join us in person or let them know about our online content. Get ready for an uplifting experience this morning as we come together for worship and receive a powerful message from Pastor Tony. What's up, everyone? Good morning, and once again, welcome to our Water's Edge online Sunday morning worship experience. Thank you so very much for tuning in, hanging out with us today. For those of you that continue to like and share our online worship experiences with your circle of influence, thank you so very much for doing that. Continue to do that. We have people tuning in from all over the place. Last Sunday was Easter. We had hundreds of people who tuned in, and also we had an amazing in-person service. We had 700 people in our first service and six. 600 people in our second service. It was a big day and we cannot wait to see you all back this coming Sunday. So we absolutely love y'all. Also, for those of you that continue to worship with us online through giving and generosity, thank you so very much for doing that. Continue to do that. You allow us to reach more people, help more people, love more people, feed more people, shelter more people, and serve more people. All right, so today we begin a brand new series entitled The Search Party. And this study is all about this. What are you looking for? What are you and I looking for in this life? What are we searching for and what are we trying to find in this life? And also, what are some of the things that you and I need to lose in this life? And so this should be interesting. Buckle up. The other day, man, I was in a hurry. I had this meeting up here at my office. I was meeting with a young couple to plan out their wedding. I was going to officiate their wedding. And so, man, I was in a hurry trying to rush to get up here so I could make that meeting on time. And it was kind of rainy outside, and I really didn't have time to fix this big, beautiful head of hair. So I was looking for my favorite hat, and I could not find my favorite hat anywhere, man. And I was looking everywhere. I thought I just saw it on the kitchen cabinet or maybe laying on top of the bed. I would go look. I couldn't find it anywhere. I was looking in old stacks of clothes, clean clothes, dirty clothes, inside of my buckets, inside of my chest drawer, all that kind of stuff. I was looking for this favorite hat, and I could not find it anywhere. And it was getting down to the minute where I needed to leave, but I really didn't want to take the time to fix this big, beautiful head of hair. And I didn't want the rain to mess it up so I needed my hat and so then it's getting down to the minute where I have to leave or I'm going to be late for the meeting so then I just decide man I can't find my hat there's no way I can find it I just need to leave and so as I'm looking down to grab my keys I look down in my other hand and guess what I'm holding in my other hand my hat the hat that I was looking for have you ever done something like that <laughs> Hey, where's my phone? And the whole time you're holding it in your hand. I can't find my phone and you're holding it right there. In your hand. I can't find my car keys, but they're in your pocket. Sometimes what we're searching for is right in front of us. Sometimes what we're searching for is right inside of us. Sometimes what we're searching for, we're holding it right in our hand. Sometimes what we're looking for, we just need to open up our eyes and get past all the distractions so we can see it. And sometimes we have to search for something because we've lost something and we want to find it and we want to recover what we've lost. But then sometimes we're searching for something something new to replace something old and broken. So sometimes we've lost something and we go searching for it so we can find it because it's valuable. But sometimes we have something that's broken and so we need to find something new to replace what's broken. I lost my phone. I need to search for it and find it because it's valuable to me. 
my phone is broken, so I need to search for a new one to replace my old one. Now, let me ask you some questions and then let me make some statements and then we'll come back to them in just a few minutes if you're still with me. Say I'm still with you. For instance, have you ever lost something important or valuable to you? Have you ever lost something that you deeply, deeply cherished? Have you lost parts of yourself that you wish you could get back? Or does it ever feel like you want to search for a new life because your old life is broken? And of course, I know what many of you are thinking, Tony, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? Because I feel like that sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I need to search for a new life because my old life is just so broken. Now, remember this. Let's look at these statements and notice this today. If you want to find what life is really about, then you must lose what you thought life was really about. The next statement is this, and notice this. Sometimes to find what you really need, you have to lose what you thought you needed all along. The summer, in between my eighth grade year and my ninth grade year, I broke my right arm, and then right after that, I broke my right collarbone. And man, I was obsessed with basketball, still am. I was getting ready to play high school basketball. And that entire summer, I planned on going to camps and practicing and working out with a team. All my friends were doing the same thing. But when I broke my right arm and I broke that right collarbone, I was so discouraged. My mind went to the worst case scenario. Now I have to take all summer to heal. I can't practice like everybody else. Everybody else is going to get ahead of me. I'm going to fall behind. I'm discouraged. I'm sad. I don't know what to do, man. I'm obsessed with this sport called basketball, and this just set me back. So I can't practice. I can't shoot with my right arm. I can't pass with my right arm. I can't dribble with my right arm. So every time after that, I went to the gym or I went outside to practice basketball, I had to do everything with my left hand. I would dribble with my left hand. I would practice passing with my left hand, shooting with my left hand over and over and over again because that's all I could do. Well, by the time the summer ended and my arm had healed up and my collarbone had healed up, I was able to use both hands in basketball very, very effectively. I was able to go both ways and all my other friends that summer who didn't break anything and they played basketball all summer, they were actually behind me because what I thought was going to destroy my game, what I thought was so discouraging, what I thought was going to set me back. What I thought was going to make me weaker ended up making me stronger. In fact, it ended up making me stronger than everyone else on the team because now not only am I good with my right arm, but I'm also good with my left arm. So in the end, once I look back, what I thought was going to make me weaker and set me back actually made me much stronger. What I thought I needed was what I didn't need all along. I needed to go through that adversity so that adversity could cause me to dig down into that grit on the inside of me and tap into that perseverance and make me stronger. So again, sometimes to find what you really need, you have to lose what you thought you needed all along. Let me ask you this. Has your hope been replaced with negativity? Has your faith and hope been replaced with discouragement? Has your faith and hope and love and compassion and joy and optimism and positivity? Has it been replaced with discouragement, heartache, pain, emptiness, sadness? Has your love been replaced with anger? Has your forgiveness been replaced with resentment? Now, I want to show you some statements that Jesus made. And then these statements explain some of the observations that you and I just looked at. These statements of Jesus help us understand these observations that we're trying to apply to our life. So I want to show you some statements that Jesus made. But first, a story. If you're still with me, Say, I'm still with you. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 5. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector of the region. And he had become very, very wealthy, very, very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead of the crowd, climbed up into a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was about to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by his name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down from that tree. I must be a guest at your home today. I must be a guest at your house today. Understand what's happening right here. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, a chief tax collector, the main tax collector. And I've told you about this before, but a tax collector was a Jewish man who was working for the Roman government to, to collect taxes for Rome from his own people. So his own people thought he was a traitor. His own people thought he was scum. His own people thought that he was not good enough or worthy enough for God. If you're a tax collector, you're not allowed to come into our synagogues and pray and worship God with us. Get out. 
Get out of our church. You're not good enough for God. You're a reject. You're scum. You're ripping off your own people just to get rich. God doesn't want you. We don't want you. We reject you. Get out of the house of God. You're not welcome. So in life after that, he found a job that made him very, very wealthy. He gained all of that, but in that gain, he lost his community. In that gain, he lost his connection. He lost his joy. He lost his purpose. But he heard about Jesus, and apparently this Jesus loves everyone. Apparently, he even loves the outcast. He even loves the rejected. He even loves those that have been kicked out. And so he went searching for Jesus, but he was too short. Such a wee little guy. He couldn't see Jesus over the crowd. He couldn't see Jesus over the people. The very people that thought he wasn't good enough for Jesus. The very opinions, the very judgments that thought he wasn't worthy enough for God. The very voices that said he was a scum and a traitor and an outcast. So what did he do? He went on a search, searching for life, searching for joy, searching for something new to replace his old life that was broken and he knew it was broken. And so he heard about Jesus and how Jesus could change lives and so he climbed up into a sycamore tree so he could rise above the crowd, so he could rise above the opinions, so he could rise above the religion and above the tradition and above the criticisms and above the false shame and above the false guilt and above all those judgments. He had to rise above those very same voices voices that tried to tell him over and over again that he was not worthy or good enough for God and he went looking and searching for Jesus because he knew that's what he needed in his life to find real life and when Jesus saw that he said Zacchaeus climb down from that tree I want to go to your house today let's cook a roast rice and gravy let's have some sweet iced tea I want to talk to you about some things your heart and your life is about to change Notice these statements of Jesus. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my disciple or follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you're going to lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you're going to find it. And I know what many of you are thinking, Tony, what did Jesus mean by that? If you try to hang on to your life, you're actually going to lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you're actually going to find real life, real hope, real joy, real optimism and real positive outlooks on your future and on your walk with God and on your life. So what does that mean when he said, if you hang on to your life, you're going to lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you're going to find it. Well, this is what he meant. And remember this today. If you want to find what life is really about, then you must lose what you thought your life was really about because real life and real purpose is only found in loving Jesus and loving people. And when this becomes our driving force, that's when you rediscover your hope. That's when you rediscover your optimism and that's when you rediscover your joy. We are searching for our optimism over life today. We are searching to get our joy back. We are searching so we can get this positive faith and this positive outlook on life back and on our future. And it also means this when Jesus said that if you hang on to your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you will find it. It also means this, that sometimes to find what you really need, you have to lose what you thought you needed all along. Sometimes we let the world convince us that we need this or that to have real purpose, real happiness, real joy, real faith, and real optimism. But when you lose all of that, that's when you realize that you can find all of that purpose and all of that hope and all all of that faith and all of that strength and all of that optimism in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And so today, very quickly, this is what I want to talk to you about. If you feel like you've lost your hope, your faith, your positive outlook on life, your joy and your optimism, then how can you get it back? Four steps today to get our joy back, to recover that which is lost. Four steps today to recover our hope back and our optimism back and our faith back so we can go on a search party and recover that that we lost in our life. And so in our life, in my life and in your life, in times of darkness and despair, adversity, negativity, hopelessness, loneliness, it's easy for us to lose sight of the hope and the strength and the future that we have because of our relationship with Jesus. Because honestly, through faith and perseverance and finding our ultimate purpose and loving God and loving people, we can rediscover and get all that optimism back and all that love back and all that hope 
back and that positive outlook on life and your future back. The first step, the first observation is this. If you're still with me, say I'm still with you. Embrace gratitude. In our life, we really need to begin finding our life again by growing this outlook of gratitude. Growing this outlook of gratitude. Despite life's difficult adversities and challenges, there's always something to be thankful for. Every single day, make sure that you thank God for even the smallest victory. If you want to get your life back, if you want to get your strength back, your hope back, your joy back, your optimism back about your future and about your walk with God and about your life, then thank God every single day for even the smallest victories. Grow that outlook on life. Thankfulness and gratitude. Thankfulness and gratitude. Even in the darkness of time, thankfulness and gratitude. Hold on to it and you will rise up out of it. If we want to find real joy and real hope in this life, we have to get to a place where we're content with loving God and loving people. Are you content with that? Or are you always searching for more? We have to find a way to be thankful and have gratitude and be content with loving God and loving people. That's the ultimate purpose in life anyway. The next step is this. If you're still with me, Sam's still with you. Find meaning in adversity. Like if you break your right arm, use that time to make your left arm stronger. Well, it works the same way with our faith and our joy and our hope and our positive outlook and our optimism and our resilience and our perseverance and our gratitude and our contentment and our thankfulness. Sometimes what you think is going to destroy you actually propels you and makes you stronger. It actually gives you more endurance, more hope, more joy, more optimism, more faith when you come out on the other side. Every trial offers an opportunity for growth and resilience. Every adversity offers an opportunity for growth and resilience. And so when you come out of your dark time, Hold on to God. Hold on to hope. Hold on to faith. And hold on to staying, staying in your, staying walking with God no matter what. And holding on to that relationship with Him so you can regrow that optimism. The next observation is this, and notice this today. Feed your faith. Your personal faith in Jesus is a powerful source of hope and strength and, and contentment and optimism. Whether it's through prayer, meditation, worship, or servanthood, Feeding your faith always connects you to a greater purpose in life. If you start to starve your faith, your hope is going to leave you. If you start to starve your faith, your optimism, your positive outlook about your life and the future, your resilience, your strength, your endurance is going to leave you. Always, always, always feed your faith. And then the last observation to recover our hope and our joy and our optimism is this. And notice this today. Cultivate connections. Surround yourself with people who love God. Surround yourself with people who pursue joy over depression, who pursue joy over discouragement because it's a choice. It's a choice every single day. Every single day you can make a decision to be thankful for even the smallest of victories. Every single day we make a choice to get our joy back and our hope back and our optimism back. Surround yourself with people who fight for it. Surround yourself with connections and friendships who fight for their joy and fight for their hope and fight for their optimism. Whether it's, uh, whether it's through seeking God together, make sure you have that human connection. Reach out to friends. Reach out to family. Reach out to people that love you and also also be that type of community for other people because that gives you more purpose than anything. Be there for other people to help other people lift each other up, help other people hold on to their joy, rediscover their joy, hold on to their hope, rediscover their hope, hold on to their optimism and rediscover their optimism. And when you become that type of community for other people and surround yourself with that type of community, it'll cause you to rediscover this life that you thought you lost. You'll rediscover your joy and your strength and your optimism. Optimism. I want you to remember this today as we close and notice this. Hope is not just a fleeting emotion, but a steadfast belief in the possibility of a better future. We need to hold on to this truth today and believe this today. We need to hold on to this faith today and face each day with a rediscovered joy and hope and optimism and faith and courage. Thank you so very much for hanging out with us today. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Now continue to stay tuned in for an amazing time of worship with the amazing Water's Edge worship team. We cannot wait to see you back next Next week, we love you all.
message from Pastor Tony. We sincerely hope that today's worship experience has left you feeling encouraged and inspired. If you found a connection in the service and want to stay engaged throughout the week, check us out on our social media at Water's Edge Gathering on Facebook or Water's Edge underscore LC on Instagram. For a more interactive experience, consider downloading our app. It enables you to participate in online giving, enjoy worship songs, and replay messages from Pastor Tony. Whether you're curious about salvation and baptism, interested in volunteering, or have a prayer request, make your way to our Welcome Center in the lobby. Simply scan the barcode and our dedicated volunteers will be ready to assist you. We genuinely love and appreciate each one of you. Looking forward to welcoming you back next week at the Water's Edge where everyone finds a meaningful place to walk.